Hi there guys, Sam here. Welcome to episode four of Sam Talks Cars, where basically I go through your comments from the previous episode and yeah, just discuss them in the car community. So let's get straight into this one. Um, so the first comment, <laughs> okay, nephew Sam, here's another topic we should discuss. Crossovers being taller and more expensive hatchbacks. You may have seen a trend in hatchback designs, cars like VW Tiguan, they are essentially still hatchbacks, but they're a bit taller and quite a lot of expensive. They often cost between 2,000 and 7,000 more than the equivalent hatchback, and I don't see a point of having one. However, the only way cars like this, in my opinion, make sense is if they've got four-wheel drive, they work. <laughs> Please don't take the nephew bit seriously. I'm kind of like I'm a four-wheel drive. A character played by Nigel. <laughs> Nigel. Um, yes, thank you so much for the comment, and really good points, actually. A crossover SUV has always been that sort of fad. Um, really, for people who are less... I would say into their cars in some ways it's sort of like a perception from the human mind they see something a little bit taller and a little bit bigger and they think it's more practical um which might be a sense to some degrees but you know do i think the new say ford puma is that much bigger than a ford fiesta not really um do i think it's worth the premium no but people buy them and they they sell well it's, it's easy money for the manufacturers you know they've already got a platform jack up the suspension a little bit make things a little bit wider change a bit of the body shape, it's an easy, easy deal. Um, VW Tiguan as well is obviously just like, um, you know, it just gets bigger and bigger. Um, like the T-Rock is kind of like a Golf bigger and then you've got the Tiguan's a little bit bigger and then the Touareg, which is proper huge. Um, yeah, for me, all the car you really kind of need for a family is a Golf. Um, and if you need something a little bit bigger, Golf Estate would work quite well. But um, yeah, to be honest with you, the way things are all going, with everything going electric as well, I can see like SUVs with the four-wheel drive thing kicking off more so than the small super minis or even the normal hatchbacks, um, just because there's more margin in it and they're quite popular. But it's a good little point. Um, yeah, it's it's all about the money really. I don't see them going away, but it's going to be interesting to see how they sort of um, integrate it into kind of the electric world, I would say. But no, thank you so much for the comment. And yeah, I do agree with your points. Um, next question. So, hi Sam, would you go towards a Golf 8 GTI 8 or 7 7.5 or 8R? Um, so, a couple of good questions there. You know, I've driven the GTI Club Sport a couple of times, the Club Sport 45. I've driven the 40th edition. I've driven like, um, what else have I driven? The 7.5 GTI as well. And I've obviously driven the Mark 8 Golf R. Between all of those three, I'd go for the Mark 8 Golf R. But, you know, I, I would like to try the Golf 8 GTI, just the basic one. The Club Sport was pretty fantastic. I love the 7s and the 7.5s, I thought they were great. I think if um, you know you want to save a little bit of money to do other things in your life, um, I don't think you can go wrong with a 7. You know, how much, uh, like a, a Mark 7, not even a 7.5 GTI, uh, which I hope to potentially try um, in a couple of weeks, actually in January. Uh, I don't know, 20 grand? let's just say, for a decent one, potentially even less. That's a lot of money saved in your pocket over like a Mark 8 Golf R is obviously 40, 45, a Golf 8 GTI is obviously in the 30s, 35 grand. So from a price per what you're getting, the sevens are very good. Saying that, you get good lease deals these days, you get good finance agreements on new cars. Um, and they seem to be holding their value more because of the chip supply issue and because of the delays in cars. Um, so there is reasons to go for, for all of them. Put it this way, I don't think you could go wrong with any of them. Um, in the UK, as you can see, it's quite dark. It's three o'clock, it's not even that late, and it's wet, and it's cold, and it's slippery, and four-wheel drive is very handy, even at slow speeds. So 8R for me, if you're on a budget, Mark 7 GTI, absolute base, and you'll be more than happy in these cars. That's my kind of advice, but thank you so much for the comment. Next comment, is it just me, or when you do the flip thing on your camera and you have to be at the other side of the room, you did this in your Golf R, it's confusing, looked like you went from driving right Android to left Android. Um, yeah, good point, I'm glad you spotted it. Um, funnily enough, if you watch a lot of other YouTubers, they will potentially do that as well, but it'll probably be a little bit more subtle, more noticeable when I'm driving. Um, but for example, I could do it here as I'm talking, um, you won't really notice it as much. It's just for keeping people's attention, basically, rather than me just sort of sitting here like this, not moving. But um, yeah, I don't do it too much, but um, yeah, interesting that you've spotted it. But yeah, no, thank you for the comment, thank you for the point as well, um, for sure. Next comment, thank you for giving my thoughts on the comments. Yeah, that's on the previous video, so yeah, no problem at all. If you put in a comment, I'm gonna talk about it, so thank you for that. 
Um, next question, next comment. I couldn't disagree with one thing you said. I usually find, find something to disagree with. Your point about too much PHP was spot on. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, you know, not you know, I'm not here to sort of agree or disagree with anyone. If that makes sense, I think I'm just here for a bit of a community and a bit of a chat. I hope people find like I always say it. I think if people have like an open mind, take on the opinion of whoever you want to, particularly when it comes to cars. I kind of always set it up to kind of do a little bit of a community um, and hopefully help people out in that guise and hopefully come from a non-bias perspective and um, yeah to hopefully help you out but yeah no that's that's for sure but no that's the end of the comments um, I know we're coming up to sort of like Christmas time and things like that so hopefully everyone's going to have a fantastic Christmas and um, yeah thank you all so much for the comments um comment again in this video and i will share it in the next episode and we'll, yeah chat a bit about cars but no thank you so much for watching thank you so much for the support of the channel and um, i'll see you again next time